everyone. In today's video, I want to talk about how to avoid getting hit by the retirement tax torpedo. Now, the calculation the IRS uses to determine how you pay taxes on retirement income creates this danger zone where taxes can be significantly amplified. And if you fall into this danger zone, you could pay a much higher tax rate on some of your retirement income. So in this video, I want to talk about how you can avoid the pitfall of paying way too much in taxes. So when we're talking about the retirement tax torpedo, we have to understand the basics of how Social Security benefits are included as part of your taxable income because this is the hinge point of setting off this amplification of taxes. So in a broad sense, individuals fall into three basic categories. The first is where none of your Social Security benefit is taxable. Then the second category is where somewhere between 1% and 85% of your benefit is included in taxable income. And then the category where 85% of your benefit is taxable. Now, the danger zone of the retirement tax torpedo exists in the upper end of the first category through the lower end of the third category. Now, in the first category where none of your Social Security benefits are taxable, you have no real need to fear slipping into the danger zone unless you have other income that could push you into that second category. But then, on the other hand, if you're firmly in the third category where 85% of your benefits are taxable, the only real choice you have is to somehow lower your income so that you qualify for the first or second category. And this is unrealistic for some people because they're there thanks to large incomes from pensions, maybe required minimum distributions, or some other sources. But if you find yourself in the top of the first category, anywhere in the second category, the bottom of the third category, you may have more control over how much you pay in retirement taxes. Now, I call this area the danger zone because this is where the taxes can double on income. And for some, this retirement tax torpedo of magnified taxes can easily be avoided with a strategic, well-thought-out retirement income plan. Now, this starts with knowing your numbers. The first thing you need to be able to do is calculate your combined income for Social Security purposes. This is the number that the administration uses to determine how much of your Social Security benefit is taxable. It's often referred to as provisional income, but we'll use the specific term combined income since that's what the administration uses. The combined income can roughly be calculated as your adjusted gross income plus any tax-exempt interest like you might get from tax-free bonds, plus 50% of your Social Security benefits. Now, once you've calculated your combined income, you simply apply it to the threshold tables to determine what percentage, if any, of your Social Security benefits are going to be included as taxable income. So let's take a look at these for a moment. Let's first look at the combined income tables for a single person. If your total combined income is less than the base amount of $20, $5,000, none of your Social Security benefits will be taxed. But if your combined income is between $25,000 and $34,000, up to 50% of your benefit may be taxed. And if your combined income is more than $34,000, up to 85% of your benefits may be taxed. Now, if you file a joint return and you and your spouse have a combined income that's less than the base of $32,000, none of your benefits are going to be taxable. And if your total combined income is between $32,000 and $44,000, up to 50% of your benefit is taxable. And if your combined income is more than $44,000, then up to 85% of your benefit may be taxable. Now, this system is this gradual phase-in of tax on Social Security benefits where, as income rises, more of your Social Security benefits are subject to taxation until, eventually, a maximum of 85% of all of your benefit payments are subject to being treated as taxable income. Because of the way Social Security income phases into taxation through this formula, there is a danger zone when every dollar of increase in combined income pulls more Social Security into taxation. In this zone, the effective tax rate on the other income skyrockets. For example, if an individual is in the upper end of the danger zone and takes $1 from his IRA account, they'll not only have to pay tax on that $1, but also on 85 cents of their Social Security benefit. So effectively, they took out $1, but they had $1.85 added to their taxable income. Now, let me give you a real-world example of how this may work. Let's assume that a married couple, Wayne and Lisa, have the following retirement income streams. So Wayne has a full retirement age Social Security benefit 
of $3,000. Lisa has a full retirement age benefit of $1,650. So collectively, they have $4,650 in gross monthly Social Security. Now, in addition to their Social Security payments, they take out $2,000 per month in distributions from their IRA. So using this information, we can do a quick calculation and see that every year, this is $24,000 in IRA distributions and then $55,800 in Social Security benefits. Based on those income numbers, we can run that through a tax calculator and see what the results are. We have the $24,000 in IRA distributions, then $55,800 in gross Social Security benefits. But because of their other income, only $12,715 of their Social Security is taxable. So their adjusted gross income is the IRA distributions plus the taxable part of Social Security, which comes up to $36,715. We can then take away the 2023 standard deduction, which is $30,700. They get the extra bump because they're over 65. And this gives them a taxable income of $6,015. And when you run that through the federal tax brackets, that gives them a tax liability of $602. But let's change this up slightly and assume that Wayne and Lisa want to take an extra $40,000 from their IRA to buy a new truck. Now, they have about $800,000 in their IRA, so they know this won't put them at risk of running out of money since they're only taking out about 3% of their portfolio value. But how would this change things for taxes? Well, let's look at the numbers and hang on to your hat because this is probably going to shock you. So first, we have the $24,000 in IRA distributions, and then we'll add an additional $40,000 for the purchase of the truck. Then the only other income for the year was the $55,800 in Social Security benefits. So when we run this through a tax calculator, we get a much different result. In this scenario, we have their IRA distributions of $64,000, but now the taxable amount of their Social Security benefits has increased from $12,715 to $46,715. And their adjusted gross income is just over $110,000. And this means their taxable income is now at $80,015. And all of this drives up their tax liability to $9,162. So how did taking out $40,000 from their IRA result in their taxable income increasing by $74,000? and their tax liability is 1,400% higher. Well, this goes back to how your Social Security benefit is taxable on a graduated scale. As your income increases, so does the amount of your benefit that's taxable. And in this case, the additional $40,000 in the IRA distribution caused an additional $34,000 of their Social Security benefit to be counted as taxable income. So in this case, for every dollar that came out of their IRA, their taxable income increased by $1.85. This is the retirement tax torpedo. Now, this may be avoidable, though, and there are a few ways to get around it, but much of this will depend on the type of retirement accounts you have, any other retirement income sources, and the amount of income you need while you're living in retirement. But broadly speaking, here are a few ways that may help you lower the effect of the retirement tax torpedo. In many circumstances, there are opportunities for planning around this danger zone and avoiding having more of your hard-earned money go to the IRS. For example, if you still have some time before retirement, you may ought to consider using a Roth IRA. This is possibly the most valuable tool for planning around tax on Social Security because distributions from a Roth are not counted in your combined income. So if you think you may eventually be in this danger zone, you should consider building a pool of money in your Roth account. Uh, you may be able to contribute to a Roth IRA while you're still working up to $6,500 per year, and that's $7,500 if you're over the age of 50. And if your income is too high, you may be able to use a backdoor Roth if your assets are all in the right account types. You may also want to check with your retirement plan at work as well to see if they offer a Roth option. Using a Roth 401k or 403b in 2023 will allow you to put in up to $22,500 per year, and that's 30000 if you're over the age of 50, or you may want to consider doing some Roth conversions. This can be by converting traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs, or in many cases, you can do an in-plan conversion within your 401k. Just a warning on Roth conversions. You need to make sure you understand the cost of these conversions before you pull the trigger. Not just taxes, but 
If you're 63 or above, you have to consider how it affects your Medicare premiums as well. The cost isn't necessarily a reason to not do a conversion, but you do need to clearly understand the cost and make a data-driven decision. Now, those strategies focus mostly on people who are still working. So if you're already retired, there are still a few things you can do. So for example, you could organize your retirement income in a manner that could lead to more of your income coming from Social Security and less from sources that are 100% taxable. For example, if you plan to retire at 65, it may be most optimal to take your early years of retirement income from your retirement accounts while letting your Social Security benefit increase because remember, only one half of your Social Security benefit will count in the formula that determines the amount of that benefit which is going to be subject to taxes. Now, as we've talked about in other videos, there are risks to that strategy as well, but having the data will help you decide if the risks are worth the potential reward. Now, if you really want to get specific on your retirement income structuring, you could take your normal income from your IRA or 401k and then fill up the 22% bracket with Roth conversions. And then once you turn 70, you could continue to withdraw from your 401k or IRA to the top of the 10% bracket and then finish out the needed income from your Roth IRA. This would keep you below the combined income amount that would trigger that retirement tax torpedo. Now, ultimately, the point of this video is not to tell you, don't spend your money or you'll have to pay taxes, but rather have a plan to spend the money you want to spend and reduce the taxes you pay in retirement. I can tell you, planning your retirement income stream is worth the effort. And you can't just take this video as a template for what you should do because everyone's situation is different. But if you want some help in planning your retirement income stream with a plan that considers all of your personal factors, get in touch with me and my team. There's a link down below where you can read more. And if you like what you see, you can go directly to my calendar and book a meeting. Also on this page, I have a sample of what one of these plans looks like. So you can get a good feel for how my firm approaches this. And let me tell you, if you think you already have a retirement plan, this one is probably going to be much different than the one you have. Again, go to that link. It's down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching.